So here is the table base. Okay, so I'm going to start laying out my pieces of wood. So this was originally a 10 foot piece of wood that I had Home Depot cut for me. Obviously, that's going to be the back. And, oh, no, no. So up is down. Because <laughs> this is the bottom of the table. I think this we should... That's five. The coda is always under my feet. This is my Golden's toys. Here, bud. Yes, he's kind of... And this is pretty much... going to poke through to the other side. This is supposed to be two inches, but I measured it and it's really one and a half inches, I think. So I got these screws, which are one and one fourth. You can, this, this is what I bought. I mean, clearly it says two by 12 by 10, right? So I measured it, definitely 10 feet, definitely 12 inches width. But it's an inch and a half, so how they get the two, I don't know. But what I'm going to do is get my stability here. And I'm just going to drive in a screw. You know? They're all screwed in. I went ahead and marked a star here. And I marked it on the table base. Uh, put a negative here and the negative equal uh, when you flip the base on here, just so I have that accurate. Because if I flip that around, suddenly something may overlap because these were not perfect on the base. Oops, so excited. Okay. Oh. All right, it is wobbly because those brackets on the base are, the one is bent. Hmm. So now what I'm gonna do is do my finish. So here's the colors I'm working with. This is a, it's actually exterior stain. Let's see, it's bare premium wood coating, semi-transparent. Semi um, it gets good coverage with one coat because it's uh, semi-transparent, but it's still transparent. So we're gonna see this nice wood grain. We've got some rough edges here and I'm just gonna do a nice power sanding. Okay, all sanded. We're gonna get brush off just with a nice big brush. And I really mainly, I love the natural grooves in this wood. So I didn't want to completely smooth it down, but I didn't want any snags. I just rounded the corners nice. So let's get to it. Starting off, and I'm just using a chip brush. Good old chip brush. And I'm just going to get a coat of this gray. I may go against the grain, but then I always final stroke with the grain. All right, so gray is on. I put a fan on to help it set up. Okay, so now I'm taking a little bit of our sienna and uh, just drip there. So I'm gonna kind of, and I'm just gonna get little hints of it. Kind of in an organic, I don't want to see a pattern, I want an organic flow to this. So I'm just kind of rubbing it in wherever I feel I want little spikes of color. i 
tell you what's really working with this is the actual grain has a hint of this sienna in it. So it's really kind of pulling that out, and I like that. I really like it in these knots. Just put the life back in them. And I'm just using a towel. Mixed the coffee and the slate together, probably 50-50. Probably then the creases, the knots. And again, just a towel. Okay, I'm putting very, I'm putting heavier weight as I'm, where it's merging. And where I'm coming in here, I'm lightening it up. So I leave it heavy, I'm not pulling it off. That way it's a nice and smooth transition. So feather weight right here. I like filling that crease in. Oh, look at that crust. Oh, gotta enhance that. Probably didn't see it until I filled it with the color. You can really see. Gosh. Again, I'm going heavy pressure because uh, here I'm really grinding it into the pits and pulling off the relief because I do still want to see my nice gray undertone, my sienna, still want that coming through. And I'm really going to get nice and heavy on these edges. I mean all around the edges. Don't let it sit too long because it will start setting up and you won't pull it off as nice as you It is a water base, so you, you know, window of opportunity is not huge, it's comfortable. I'm seeing little dry areas that are pitted that I didn't quite fill in, so I'm coming over them. Really sinking it in there. I'm just going to keep layering it on where I want it. I'm, I'm actually kind of winging this. So as I'm doing it, I'm deciding I want more and more. Playing off the other. Really want that crap to be filled in here. Okay, this one's still a little wet, so it's pulling off. So I'm going to let that set up before I add any more on. Dip it in the wood there. Oh. I'm dying to put more right there and there because it's just too light, but I'm going to resist temptation, put the fan on it, and let it set up because I don't want to just pull it off. Okay, right, that was enough, just a few minutes. And I'm going to add two areas that are just a little too light for my taste. Leave it. I'm using the side of my brush. I should do it over here. Angling it and just getting the dark. And I'm leaving it on the edge so I'm swiping under so it's not drippy. And slightly over, 
but leaving leaving this color on the edge. And it's grabbing nice because that's really where I sanded the heck out of it to uh, smooth the edge up. Mommy boring you? All right, I am digging this so much. I come in, I like my edging. Yes, I do, but let's do this. All right, what I'm gonna do, and I'm using cheesecloth. This will only work with cheesecloth to get a nice smooth finish. So you want it to be a nice clean area. And I'm coming on each corner so I just want it smokier in the corners and I'm blotting. You don't want it to look like mold, so swipe it. <laughs> Blot it and then nice, like, I mean feather, feather light swipe just to cut the little mottled look and get a streaky wood grainy look. All the corners. Yeah, I'm digging it. Blotting. So I want it heavy. And then swipe. And I think I'm going to do a little bit in some of these cornered areas because I it's really, really like that. It enhances the fact that this is several. Well, who's here now? Yeah. We have more company. That is Isabella. Hi, Isabella. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, top coat time. I'm just using polyurethane, oil based. Because we're gonna have food and drink, water, heat, hot plates, whatever, I just think we need oil base for durability. So I'm just using a new chip brush, not the old one that has water on it. So if you roll your sealant on, it's gonna bubble. You do not ever, ever, ever roll sealant on. And you work it back and forth. You work it into the substrate. I will tell you, I like that amber hue on there. I mean, it just has such a nice warm glow. Oh, does that look good? Man. Just building up the luster. We've got all these beautiful hues on there. It just get richer and richer and richer. I'm really happy with this. I'm delighted. Okay, so our top coat has sealed. Uh, our sealant is dried overnight. Uh, I had the fan on it all night. So what I'm going to do is just take this soft sanding sponge and I'm just going to sand. And I'm doing it circular. I want to hit all the angles of the slivery part, and it is pulling some of the finish up uh, on the peaks, and I like that. I'm going to let that happen. Um, and I'm really digging it. Now this is looking dry, but we're going to put a second coat on, and that'll pull the luster back up. All right, so. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. <laughs> so already, what I've done good God, is I use my handy tandy big brush. I got all the particles off, especially in the cracks. Then 
I started top coating first board. I'm on the second board. So we're going to let that dry. I'm going to put the fan on it.